Hi, Breakout Coast students. This is Unit 8, Day 2. Today, we're going to be talking about how do we convert from complex numbers into a new form, which is called polar form. And it does involve some trigonometry, which is why we started Day 1 of this unit talking about some trig. If you have some paper nearby, let's get started with some notes on how we graph complex numbers. And this is something that you may or may not have learned in Algebra 2 last year. So I'm going to review the process with you really quickly. When we say complex numbers, by the way, we're talking about something in the form A plus BI. So that's a form that we're pretty familiar with. We've dealt with that form in many other units so far this year. So when something's in A plus BI form, when I go to graph the number 3 plus 2i, it's going to have a similar feel to graphing things in the xy plane. Okay, so usually we label this horizontal as the x-axis and this is the y-axis. We now label them as the a-axis and then the bi-axis. So if the imaginary axis is vertical, the real number line is horizontal. So to graph 3 plus 2i, it's going to have a similar-ish feel to the point 3, 2. So if I were to graph that in the xy plane, we would go to the right 3 and then we go up 2. And I say it's a similar feel because it's not actually just representative of that point in space. Complex numbers are actually graphed as vectors. And if you're not familiar with vectors because you haven't dealt with them as much in, let's say, a physics -y type class, you know, vectors are mathematical quantities that have a certain length and a certain direction. So even though we have an arrow at the end there, that arrow is just indicating the direction that we're heading in, not that it goes on in that direction forever. Not necessarily critical for this unit, but um, just a quick note there about the notation that we use for our vectors. So let's just graph the others, make sure we're confident with how we graph complex numbers. If we have negative 2 plus 4i, that would, in the complex plane, go to the left 2, and then up 4, 3, 4. Again, you can kind of mark where the point negative 2, 4 would be, but then simply draw a vector to where that location is, and that's the graphed complex number, negative 2 plus 4i. Okay. If we have something that's purely real, you know, a pure real number like negative 2 could be expressed as a complex number if we think of it as plus 0i. So the only thing that we'll see here is a vector that goes directly to the left, two units, and it's not going to go up or down at all. So negative 2 would be expressed as that vector right there. Hope you guys can see that okay. You can definitely see the endpoints of the arrow. Let's see if this green helps at all. Yeah, that helps a little bit. Okay. And then finally, negative 3i, similarly, if you have something that's purely imaginary, that's not going to go to the left or right at all. In this case, if we have 0 minus 3i, this just goes down three units on the imaginary axis, and you get something that looks like that. So we're going to eventually make a lot of connections between why graphing complex numbers are important to us. And we're going to, like I said, learn right now, actually, how do we represent complex numbers in a completely new format? And it's going to take us a few days to build, like, why this is actually important to us. But for now, just follow along with me here. OK, so for a new way to represent complex numbers, you'll need a circle drawn on a set of coordinate axes. We're going to say that this is in the complex plane. So we've got like a number. Um, this is the A axis. This is the BI axis, just like we saw up above. And when I draw this vector here labeled R, that's representing some sort of complex number. So the value of R is going to represent a radius length or a distance from the origin. Perhaps we call it R because it looks like it's a radius. So the other thing that we're going to be of interest in looking at here is the angle that's made with the x-axis there. So that angle theta. So theta is the angle formed with the x-axis. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to do is because this is a number that's graphed in the complex plane here, if I drop down a vertical line from the end of that vector right there, we know that this has some length a. And since this is the imaginary, the bi axis, that this has some length b. Right? So in terms of the components of these two lengths, this is a distance a, this is a distance b, that creates that right triangle 
with radius r as the hypotenuse. So there's two things that I want us to look at. Now that I've drawn that triangle, we can establish the ratio for cosine of theta. Cos theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the ratio a over r. What I want us to do is actually solve for a, and that's pretty easily accomplished. If you multiply both sides by r, we would get that a equals r times the cosine of theta. Similarly, I can ask this for the ratio for sine theta. That would be pretty easy for us to determine as well. So sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be the ratio of b over r. And maybe it won't be a surprise that I'll have a solve for b here. b would equal r times the sine of theta. And then we're going to put some pieces together here. So now that I have these two equivalents, that a is r times cos theta and b is r times sine theta, where I'm headed with all this is that if I have a number in A plus BI form, that complex number form, that A is really the same as R cos theta, and B is equivalent to R sine theta, and that's gonna have to get multiplied by I. Okay. Now, this is a new form for us. This is called polar form, and before I write down that this is officially polar form, there's two things that I want us to do. One thing is recognize that both of these have R in it, so you could factor out R and write cos theta plus, typically the I is brought to the front of the sine theta, so I'm gonna write that just for notation purposes as I sine theta, just so that the I doesn't get like trapped inside the angle theta there. We don't wanna uh, cause any confusion. This is what's known as polar form. So we're going to convert from this complex number form. Complex, by the way, is going to be known as rectangular form. We're going to be taking things from one form and converting them into the other. Okay, so we're going to focus on just one of these transformations today from one form to the other. And then tomorrow we'll, we'll do the other switch. Okay, one other quick thing before we move on is that there is a shorthand version. So if you don't want to write out r times cos theta plus i sine theta every time we're converting from a plus bi to this new polar form. The shorthand version is r cis theta. And cis is the abbreviation for cosine plus i sine of theta. So it's going to take us a little while to get used to those two things, that these two things mean the same thing. But of course, we'll do enough practice that you'll feel hopefully pretty confident with that shorthand version. Okay. If you now open up your packet, that's it for notes on your own today. I have this on page six in the packet. Hopefully that's where you see it as well. Before we actually get into some of our conversions, we have to recall some of the properties of special right triangles, which we talked about on day one. So as a quick reference, you may want to include at the top of your page of your notes here, the patterns for the 45, 45, 90 special triangle and the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So once you have the, those at the top, the patterns we used yesterday may have said something like for 45, one, one radical two, that should be a common pattern that we're familiar with. But in general, let's call that X, X, and then X radical two for the hypotenuse. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend these triangles to side lengths that are something other than when X is equal to one. Even if that was our focus yesterday, I don't think it's a big jump for us to call those in general a side length of X. And therefore, the ratio for a 30, 60, 90 becomes x across from the 30, across from 60, that same number x times radical 3, and the hypotenuse would be 2x. So in each of these examples, what we want to find is we want to determine the remaining side that's missing, and then also the value for the angle theta. Okay. And this will be really helpful in some of our conversions that we're about to do in a few minutes. So. What's missing in number one? Well, we're missing the hypotenuse. And if we have side lengths of three and three, well, I'm looking at the special triangle here, side lengths of three and three imply that the hypotenuse is three radical two. So the missing side is three radical two, and then that angle theta, although this angle right here across from a three is 45 degrees, what I'll say is that 45 degrees is just what we call the reference angle, which we talked about yesterday. The actual value of theta is whatever this total is in quadrant four. So take the full circle 360, subtract out the 45, 
the angle theta that we really want to talk about is 315. I know theta is labeled as that reference angle uh, position, but the angle that we'll want to use for converting purposes in a few minutes is the angle 315 degrees. What I'll do is I'll leave the right side as a, a warm up for us tomorrow. So you can skip these with me in the notes. Let's do the left side and just get some, some quick practice here. I notice how, just like we did yesterday, if we're going to the left or down, those legs are labeled as negatives. It's just to help us in identifying and, and labeling in the correct quadrant. And it, I mean, technically those side lengths have a positive length. It's just for direction purposes that we put negatives. Okay, so we think about the hypotenuse here. This pattern's a little bit different than what we saw up above. If we have a two and a two radical three, it's following the pattern for a 30, 60, 90 pattern. Two here, two radical three there. Two times that value of two would make a four for the hypotenuse. So the missing side is four. And then once we have that missing side, we want to figure out what is theta. Whenever you're across from a radical three, across from a radical three is a reference angle of 60 degrees. And hopefully, again, that's something that we're pretty familiar with at this point. If not, we'll get some more practice. If I'm in quadrant four, the actual theta that we'll be concerned with is 180 plus that 60. So the theta that we'll want to list for our converting that we'll do in a moment is 240. Okay. And just one more on this column here. We can see that we have sides of 5 and 5 radical 3. So we want to figure out this angle. We also want to figure out length of the hypotenuse. Just like we had up here, if we have 5 and 5 radical 3 for the side lengths, if we think of the hypotenuse as a 2x, where x is 5, the hypotenuse, that missing side, is a length of 10. Now that I know this length is 10, the reference angle that's across from a 5, not the one with the radical 3 this time, right? So just across from that 5 would be a 30-degree reference. And therefore, the total angle in quadrant 4 would be 360 minus that 30 for a total of 330 degrees. Okay. And if you can pick up on all these pieces, we're now going to be able to, I hope, easily convert from one form to another. And the form that we're going to start with is actually the polar form of the number today. So if you turn from page six, last thing we're going to do is a little bit on page seven here, going from this r cos theta plus i sine theta form to a plus bi form and seeing what that looks like. Okay. So you can see that in the left column, all of these examples are given in the shortened r cis theta form. So this is r cis theta. And the other thing I want us to do first is recognize what does that notation even imply? It implies this. So when I say expanded form, the expanded form is r times cos theta plus i sine theta. So let's actually write that in for the first example. If you have 12 cis 30, it's 12 parentheses. And then you would put cos 30 plus I sine of 30 degrees. So just notice that these two things, they mean the same exact thing. Okay. So what I want to do is in order to figure out what is this number 12 cis 30 in rectangular form, which is a plus bi form. We're going to graph this angle, and then we're going to use the value 12. Where is r going to go? Do you remember where r was? r is the radius length. r is the length of the hypotenuse. So we know an angle. We know the radius. We want to find the other two sides of the triangle because that's the a and the bi lengths. OK, let's see if we can do this for the first example. So 30 degrees, that is definitely an angle in quadrant one. So put 30 there, and that radius length is always going to be on the hypotenuse. So there we put the 12. Now what we need to do is fill in the other two sides, which is sort of what we were just practicing with a minute ago. We need to use these special triangles in order to help ourselves out. So across from a 30, this side would have to be half the hypotenuse, so that's 6, which makes this side down here 6 radical 3. Now remember, the horizontal piece is the real number, A, and the vertical piece is the imaginary part that's on the BI axis. So the number 12 to 30 in polar form is the same thing as saying 6 radical 3 plus 6i. We went to the right 6 radical 3. We went up 6. Okay. 
Eventually, we'll take it from this form back to polar form tomorrow. But let's get a little bit more practice with, with going from polar to rectangular. 10 cis 270. First thing we're going to do is just make sure we understand that that's the same thing as 10. Cos 270 plus I sine 270. A little tough to squeeze all that in there, but you have smaller handwriting than me, you're golden. Okay. So let's catch the angle of 270. Well, 270 is a little bit interesting because it's not actually a triangle, is it? 270 is right on the quadrant border, right here. So what I want you to do is, even though it's on the quadrant border, remember that that 10 that's out front, that's the distance we are from the origin. And what I think will help is not only to label that as 10, but because it's going down, let's throw a little negative next to it. Because we know that the direction here is sort of important. Remember some of the triangles that were labeled on the prior page had negatives attached to them. Going down is definitely a negative direction. All right, remember, this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis. So therefore, if I wanted to express 10 cis 270 in A plus BI form, the value of A is zero. We're not going to the left or right. We're going straight down, so it's minus 10i. Which I guess, of course, the natural question is, do you need the zero there? Not really. So you could just write this as negative 10i, and I would accept that. Okay. All right, let's just maybe do two more. I'll leave a few for practice in class. Let's try six cis pi. We'll try this one. So it's six cosine pi plus i sine pi. You know, radians sometimes take us a little bit longer to remember how to work with those from algebra two. But pi is sort of a common radian equivalent. Hopefully you're kind of remembering that pi is equivalent to 180. It's halfway around. So this is yet another example of one that is quadrantal. It is not in a specific quadrant. It's right on the border. Remember that the value 6 is how far away I am from the origin. Because I'm going left, it needs negative. Putting the pieces together, we're going 6 to the left, which is the value of A, but we're not going up or down, so plus 0i. It's not bad to start writing it that way, just to kind of make some sense of it, that we have a horizontal piece and a vertical piece. But if there's no vertical piece, then we, of course, have zero for that component. Or you could just say negative six. That's OK. okay. Last one that I'll do is let's jump down to this example right here. And if you can't tell what was handwritten in there next to the 40, it's going to make our lives easier, actually. It says 40 radical 2, cis 3 pi over 4. So to write this in expanded form real quick, it's 40 radical 2, cosine. 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4. Okay. When you're dealing with radians, you have two options. One way is convert it to degrees if you're not sure. If you multiply this by 180 over pi and simplify that the resulting fraction, you'll find that, that this is equivalent to 135 degrees. If you are okay with not necessarily converting to degrees, what I know about this is I know that it's an angle in quadrant two because halfway around is four pi over four, right? Isn't this pi if I reduce those? Which means that this must be two pi over four. Three pi over four is midway in between those. So using some logic when we're labeling things with radians, maybe that's even easier than converting it to degrees. I'm not sure. It's up to you how you feel about it. But if this angle is pi over four in here, Right, so if this whole thing is 3 pi over 4, and that's another pi over 4 to get to 4 pi over 4, the 40 radical 2 goes on the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's where this value out front, the 40 radical 2. It's the value of r, the radius. So the last two things we want to label are what are these sides then? And remember that if this is a pi over 4 reference, pi over 4 is equivalent to 45 degrees as a reference angle which means that these legs are the same. They're actually both 40, 40 and 40. But one last really important thing, if you're going to the left or down, those are both negative directions. So you really should put a negative on this bottom leg that's headed to the left. This leg that then goes up can stay positive. And in A plus BI form, the final answer would be negative 40 plus 40i. Okay, so we use the horizontal and the vertical components. But again, direction is important. If you're going left or down, we need negatives. 
if you're going to the right or going up, of course, we can leave those as positives. So anything we left blank in the notes today, of course, we'll finish that up tomorrow. And like I said, eventually we're going to get to the point where we convert the other way. I'll start with this and we'll be able to convert to this form over here. All right, that's it for today. Have a great rest of your day.